Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Bloodstained. Curse the moon. And in fact, we are now cursing the moon. Oh, come on. See, so yeah, the axe is very strong. As long as you don't get interrupted, which is the problem with it. Because that also takes uh, the hearts still. Okay, so there's nothing here. Yeah, so we're fighting the swarm, and this is going to be the last episode. I cut the last one a little early. I wanted to make episodes that... Oh, God. Nope, it's over. I've been wanting to make episodes that were a little shorter, because um, recently I've been recording games that are all just so long. Oh, boy. Shit, I didn't even jump. That was stupid of me. Like, I recorded, um, I've been recording New Vegas. That's just so, it's, it's a great game. But, you know, it's a big old, he can't make that jump. He's too old. It's a good game, but it's, uh, really long. Dragon's Dogma is also long. Um, I believe by now I should have finished Marathon, but I'm playing Far Cry Primal. Uh, Far Cry Primal is not, like, s exhausting. It's also very good. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I panicked. I didn't jump. I panicked. I'm, I'm literally sweating. Not even two minutes in. Oh, wow. That sucked. So if I wait here, does it come? Yeah, I know for a fact that the whole game is, like, balanced to be beaten as Zangatsu. <sighs> so the thing about having a jump arc is that I'm pretty sure that the game should be balanced to like be beaten as every character. I'm not sure though. But the thing about having a jump arc is that sometimes you have to jump from a very specific part on a platform because to hit the highest point of your jump. Oh wow, that, yeah, it's coming. Jesus. It's good to sack off the old man though. Yeah, this is the this is one of the first things that was like super challenging to me. Because, like, God, look at it. <sighs> Doesn't have to be hard. Doesn't have to be fucking hard. Oh, man, and now we're going up, too. shit. Well, as expected. But yeah, I um I think that I'm I'm mostly here to do like a showcase of this game. I think that people should play this game in veteran mode. And you should invest the time necessary to beat it all the way. Um Hello? What do I do now? Do I just... Oh. Okay. But yeah, um... One of the things about the original Castlevania is, like... It really required you to, like, practice and get good and memorize. And, like, not in the way that, like... It's just hard for the sake of hard. It's hard because it's satisfying to do that. Aw, oh, man, it didn't jump. Ah, oh, well. And it feels good to to get good at it, you know? And I've been playing it in veteran mode on my, you know, on my not recording. I just wanted to show this off because I want to talk about all the Castlevanias. Um, at the very end of 2020, I realized that, like, yeah, I really do like Castlevania a whole lot. And I think it's gotten a raw deal, and it didn't deserve that. 
I should shut up and focus. <laughs> Clean. Oh, hello, sir. Um, but yeah, I really like Castlevania. I think it's a very good piece of game design. Even the second one. All of them are really solid, and I like a lot of them for a lot of different reasons. Like, Symphony of the Night is a really cool Metroidvania game. Castlevania 1 is just really cool and hard. I'm having hiccups, excuse me. Castlevania 3 is even harder, but also introduces, like, a cool mechanic of switching your party members, and, like, the idea of having a party and not a... This is another way to deal with these fuckers. But yeah, the idea of having a um, party in a not JRPG, which for the NES was unheard of. So check this out. Hip. Now I'm full up, so this isn't too relevant. Actually, I need this. Um, we're coming up on the final boss here. And before the final boss in Castlevania 4, maybe in... Maybe in 1, but there was a little hidden staircase that allowed you to... I don't want that. There's a little hidden staircase that allowed you to, um... Get a little extra goodies. But yeah, this is the final boss. She has an amazing design. Shit, man. Oh, man. Where are they coming from? So, yeah, this fight is about finding a safe place to sit and then wailing on her. And because this is technically a Castlevania game and this is the last boss, um, as is the law, there's a second form. Because, of course, there is. A second form that makes the first form look like a joke. You're restricted to this tiny platform. Oh, man. Time to break the curse of the moon. You can only hit that tiny little moon thingy up there. She lights you up like a bullet hell, but fortunately you actually get a whole bunch of goodies off of it. And then she attacks you with these big-ass spears. Oh, man. Pressure's on. Thank you, Miriam, for having a very long whip. So I actually like um, having Alfred's like default spell for this. Because it's just, it's a straight block. It defends you. That's nice. But 
One thing that I don't like about this fight is that you kind of have to be standing on the... Oh, jeez. You kind of have to be standing on the left to avoid that. And you can see that with careful use, you can actually get, like, positive by attacking with sub-weapons. Hey, alright, cool. Um, I want to apologize for my commentary. It's been kind of crap. But this game's very hard, and so I've been kind of focusing on that. But I did very well. And yeah, just like with the other bosses, she's got a big final attack. Zangetsu was astonished by his own actions. For what reason did he do this? He existed to slay demons and take revenge, but long-lost emotions had been rekindled. The time for that had passed. As his consciousness drowned in darkness, Zangetsu could only pray for their safety. So he takes that hit for them, so they don't. And then they all stand together and watch. As Dracula, I mean, that girl's castle sinks and crumbles and shit. And so, in order to stop the new Dark Emperor, Zangetsu's allies plunged into battle again. They may have to end their ally's life, but can they still save his soul? Uh, the ending of Castlevania 1 looks exactly like this. I believe the ending of Castlevania 3 might as well, but I've never beaten it. To be continued. So, beating the game like this unlocks um, the sequel mode, which uh, allows you to essentially play what happened immediately afterwards. Uh, which just gives you access to just the three. And shout out to Shin Nakamura. Great fucking job with these backgrounds. Like, I know that this game is just pixel art, but holy shit, it's so pretty. But anyway, yeah, so you uh, play through the game without Zangetsu, and instead of fighting the final boss there, you fight evil Zangetsu. Um, also, there's another path through the game where instead of recruiting any allies, as Zangetsu, you kill them. And doing so not only makes the game a lot harder, but it makes Zangetsu stronger. It gives him a double jump, for one. It gives him a... Uh, What's the thing? It's it's full moon. It's one of Virgil's moves. It's the air slash. Shout out to Ippa Yamada. Great job on this one as well. Um, and then it gives him uh, the little quick dash from Symphony. Shout out to Daisuke Ito. And Yuzi Natsume. Easy. Matt Papa. Yeah, Iga, that's... I, th I want to say his name's Iga Morahashi. I think that's right. And he creates... Excellent work, everyone. Yes, yeah, so you can either go, like, killing everyone. You can kill one person. Like, you can play the game without Alfred and get the ability off of him and recruit the others. I think? I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, if we just look here, this is uh, the normal mode that I beat. Took me two hours. This took me a lot quicker, as you can see. Um, nightmare mode is the thing where you have um, you don't have Zangetsu, and you can see that as Zangetsu, you actually this is just Zangetsu as well. And you can see that he has little things. So all these characters, as you can see, have little logos beneath them. That's their sub-weapon, naturally. Sengetsu also has these little white logos. Those are the double jump lunar phase, I want to say, and the little dash you get. And then also as Sengetsu, you cannot get any upgrades, whereas you can because you need the other characters to get them. So yeah, um, this game's absolutely fantastic. It has a direct sequel, which is Curse of the Moon 2. I have not played that one, so me playing that will be, you know, me seeing that completely raw for the first time. 
Um, I have not played Ritual of the Night, but it's very good, and I probably am going to. Um, but yeah, this is... This might be the future of Castlevania, honestly. I honestly don't know. Um, the last thing we had for Castlevania was a mediocre, like, s sequel to an okay spinoff that was also a reboot in an almost Devil May Cry, DMC Devil May Cry-esque move. Uh, but yeah, this might be this might be what Castlevania is from now on. Uh, there is a... I intend to play the other um, Castlevanias as well. I have never once in my life been able to get an emulator to work. But maybe this is the time. Maybe on this PC, I'll be able to get an emulator to work. But I want to play all the original Castlevanias. I'm going to play all the Bloodstains, which is a lot easier because there's only three of them, and they're all on my PC right now, and I own them already. Um, as for the other Castlevanias, I might have to get my friend Robert's help. But, uh... Yeah, you know what else? There's other spinoffs that are also based off of Castlevania. Like, I, I saw one called... I want to say Wallachia Curse of Dracula. And you know what? I like this style of gameplay so much, of having a jump arc and having such a specific weapon and relying on sub weapons as well as your normal weapon. I love this style so much that if I were to make an 8-bit game, it would probably be like this. Um, or like Shovel Knight. Um, but yeah, fantastic game. Great job, Inti Creates. I'm glad Iga's back. And I know that like he's been back. But yeah, this game came out in 2018. Bloodstained finally came out in 2019. And Curse of the Moon 2 came out in 2020. So, we might get another Bloodstain this year. But yeah, um, I've been Alfred. This has been Bloodstain, Curse of the Moon. Thank you for watching. I'm sorry for my commentary. I'm sleep deprived, and this is a really hard game. Yeah. Thanks for coming by. See you guys next time. See ya.